Welcome to the online worship service with Temple United Methodist Church this morning. My name is Tyree Johnson, and I'm a certified lay minister there. As we all manage to live through this unprecedented time in these unusual conditions, we as beings of both flesh and spirit yearn to commune in worship. And so together, no matter where you are, no matter how you're dressed, or whatever your mood, we welcome you this morning to join us in worship to the glory and countenance of our God, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Kids, how are you today? I want to show you a sign today uh, in American Sign Language, and it's the sign for peace be with you. Now, if you remember in church back way back months ago when we were actually in the sanctuary, we would get up and we would just walk all over the sanctuary, hugging and kissing and giving handshakes and and letting everybody know that we love them and we want to share the peace of Christ with them. But right now, we can't do that, can we? And because of the pandemic, which keeps us from doing that, we might also have times when we're just kind of feeling afraid. So what a nice thing to do, uh, but to offer people peace. So I'm going to show you the sign for peace be with you. Now the sign for peace is, um, it's a double sign. Um, and it, it, uh, the first sign is become, become calm or become quiet. So become, you put your palms together opposite each other and you twist. Can you do that? It's a little bit tricky. 
become calm or become quiet. So that's the peace part. And then with coming together, your hands coming together in fists with you. So try it. Peace be with you. One more time. Peace be with you. Isn't that nice? And then when you want to say, and also with you, you just go like this. Because this sign means the same. So same to you. Right? So you can go, you can say, peace be with you. I have to think about it. Peace. Nope. Peace be with you. Isn't it nice? Same to you. Okay? So, there's another way you can say peace, and it's a lot easier. <laughs> right? This is the sign we're all used to. Peace! But, um, but I wanted to share that with you, because I think it's fun. And it's something that you can share with your friends when you're on a Zoom. You can just say peace. Or peace. And the other thing to remember this week is that sometimes we're all afraid. But God wants us to have peace. So you just remember that. Go ahead and make that sign. Sometimes it, the first part of this sign kind of feels like you're wringing your hands, right? We're going to wring our hands and just get rid of it. We're going to become calm. Become quiet. So my friends, peace be with you. All right, guys. See you next time. Bye. Hi, my name is Mary Rainsky, and I'm the treasurer of Temple United Methodist Church. Our vows invite us to share what we have with others and to support the work of the church and its ministries. We have some fantastic people within our community that support the food ministry program, our worship, our meetings, and our classes even though we're not around each other, which I hope that changes when we get the pandemic cure. Your generosity has kept us going through this. And if you would like to continue your support, you can mail a check if you desire to to Temple at 65 Beverly Street, San Francisco, California. 94132. Or you could go to our website and click on the yellow donate button. That'll take you to PayPal. And you can do a donation with a credit card or a debit card through that. And it doesn't cost you anything. And I just wanted to once again, thank you for supporting our many, many ministries. And I'm sure we'll be back to normal eventually. Thank you. Generous God, your good gifts to us are too many to name. We've been so blessed, not so that we might hide these blessings, but they may be used to be multiplied. So as we give from our blessing stockpile, help it to multiply and grow. May our gifts empower multiple acts of mercy and compassion. And may your love pour over our world like a flood. If we have buried any of your gracious blessings, may today be the day we dig them up and put them to work in the light of your glory. And today may be the day that we will be seen as faithful servants of your kingdom. Amen. Good morning, saints. It's prayer time. I have joys and concerns for you today. And I would like to visit my joys that I have run across this past week. 
One of my joys today is that Americans are seeking unity and understanding among the people more and more. And the existence of the San Francisco Marin County Food Bank that feeds over a million people every day. Thanks for the work of so many to ease food insecurity. I would like to continue to lift up Johnson Ojo and his family. Carol Korb, Alice Lindstrom and family, my friend Reggie Caldwell during his fight for his life. Sisters Dory, Disha, Tia, Trudy, Joy, and Zarki. Nan, Lacelli, and Pastor Kelly, who inspire us with holy songs every week. Thank you. I would like also continued prayer for Sandy as she conducts prayer meetings every Monday morning at 7.30, giving us strength and leading us through the week. Thank you, Sandy. I would like to ask that we all continue to pray for our elected new government, as well as the existing government as it stands. Our land needs healing, Lord, for us to continue to fight off this relentless virus by washing our hands, physically distancing, and wearing our mask without complaint. Amen. Let us pray on these things and others' issues as they touch your heart today. Join me in prayer. Oh God, you are the spirit that took primordial soup and created order. You are a God who loves the world. You are a savior suspended on the cross, struggling to breathe. We come before you acknowledging joy George Floyd's murder and the air that was denied him because of racism. We come before you acknowledging children in frontline communities whose asthma makes running, jumping, hopping difficult. We confess that 71% of African Americans live in counties in violation of air pollution standards. I can't breathe is uttered far too many times. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with 
life anew. Empower us to faith, hope, and love in action. Amen. Thank you. Now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us so many years ago. Would you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for joining me in prayer this week. And I will be praying for you to have a very successful week and that all of your prayers that have gone before the Lord will be answered yes, no, or wait. I thank you. I'll be thinking of you and I hope you think of me and Temple. Have a blessed week. Goodbye. Our scripture today is from the letter of Paul to the saints in Christ Jesus in Philippi. Philippians 4, 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Bless the Lord.
today's scripture is a favorite of mine. It reminds me to shape up. It says to take all things to God in prayer, to have faith that God, God's got this. I don't need to fret or to worry. And it reminds me to spend time pondering positive things, to get my mind right, to think on good things. I love how Eugene Peterson uh, says it in the message version of the Bible. He puts it this way, celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all that you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them to see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up at any minute. Don't fret or worry. And praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not to curse. Put into practice what you learned from me, what you heard and saw and realized. Do that, and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. Isn't that just a wonderful message for any day and every day, and especially this day? We know that the virus has kicked up again. It's worrisome. We worry about ourselves and our friends and our families. We cry when the news comes on and tells us about more death and more illness and exhausted doctors and nurses and not enough beds for the sick and having to put bodies in refrigerated trucks because the morgues are full. How are we supposed to deal feel in the midst of all of that? How do we think about beauty and health and kindness and goodness in the midst of grief and fear? We do it by choosing to do it. By understanding that it is the only thing we can do. We need to dig deep into our faith and know that God is present even in this. We are not alone. And we can believe in God's promise that he makes in Romans, you know, that he works all things together for good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. It may be hard to see what good can come out of this. But we don't have to see to believe because God promised. And even if we can't see the final product now, God is weaving things into this beautiful tapestry of love. A pastor asked one of his parishioners to pray during the uh, prayer time uh, at worship one Sunday. And this is what the old man prayed. Lord, I don't like buttermilk. Lord, I don't like lard. Lord, I don't like flour. But when they're mixed together and baked in a hot oven, they sure do make tasty biscuits. And I just love biscuits. Please, Lord, Help us to realize that when we face things we don't like in life, we need to wait and see what you're making. After you get finished mixing and baking, it'll probably be something even better than biscuits. Amen. 
Most of us have faced difficult circumstances that we didn't like. Circumstances that triggered change and left us feeling anxious and uncertain. Years later, as we looked back through the perspective of time, we could see how God took those circumstances and made something good from them. In our last worship series, we talked about Joseph, who faced literally one hardship, one hardship uh, after another in life. He was betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery in a foreign country. While he was there, he was accused of a crime he didn't commit and thrown into prison. Yet God took all those things, all those hard circumstances, and worked them together for good. Joseph end up, ended up freed from prison and was given an important government position that allowed him to save the lives of his family uh, and many others during the years of drought and famine. No doubt Joseph didn't like his circumstances. But he was able to see the big picture or believe in the big picture. And he realized that what others meant for evil, God could use for good. If we look back over our lives, we can recall circumstances that we didn't like at times. But as the years go by, we realize the circumstances produce something good in us or for us or maybe in spite of us. Even if the pastor wasn't thrilled with the old man's worship prayer, his prayer was chock full of truth. We need to keep in mind that when circumstances we don't like come along, we need to give God time to mix and stir and make something great. All of this sounds good when you've gotten to the other side of whatever is going wrong in your life. It's a bit harder when you're in the midst of it. Hannah, my housemate, and I were saying yesterday, well, sometimes, sometimes we're able to keep the pandemic in perspective and go on about our lives, being cautious and following all the protocols for safety, but not, not feeling the fear. At other times, the fear sits on my chest and I can't breathe. And I have dealt over the past eight months with panic attacks. I didn't notice how bad it had gotten until the third week of my vacation when I finally realized I could breathe again. Fear can take over without you noticing. All of a sudden, even though you've been, you know, a calm and unstressed kind of person, all of a sudden you can't take a breath. You can't sleep more than a few hours at a time. So then you're always tired and that keeps your defenses down and fear creeps in even more easily. It can be an endless cycle. So what are we to do? How do you go from not being able to breathe to long, deep breaths? How do you go from no sleep to restful nights? How do you move from fear to hope, from anxiety to peace? Prayer is the biggest part of the formula for me. Taking time in the morning and again at night and sometimes a whole bunch in between. But the connection to God that I trust to be making all these things into something better has to be constant or the fear creeps in. The other part, uh, the other piece, um, is the other part of today's scripture. Uh, the thinking part, the pondering. Remembering that the sun rises every day. And the sun is shining even if it's covered by clouds. When you can't think of anything good to ponder, sit down with a piece of paper and write out some things you're thankful for. Think about the warm shower you had this morning. Think about the beautiful flowers you saw on your walk yesterday. Be thankful for those who passed you on your walk who were wearing masks out of love and concern for you. 
Think about the last thing that you ate, that you loved and savored. Think of times when you helped someone and saw the look of, of being loved in their face. Truly, most of us have a lot to be thankful for. And the things that scare us are usually things we can't control, so to worry about them is a waste of energy. So pray instead and let God take your concerns. God is especially good at that. And God knows what to do with those concerns. God uses them to create something better. And while God is doing that, weaving the great and awesome tapestry of love, you can let your mind think on things that are true and noble and reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise, not things to curse. And when your mind is thinking on those things, the fear and worry will fade away and be replaced by peace. Do that and God, who makes everything work together, will work you into his most excellent harmonies. The butter buttermilk, the lard, and the flour will be made into warm and yummy biscuits. Amen. And now, as you have been blessed, go forward and be a blessing to others. Go and bring the good news of peace and hope of healing and love. And go with the God of peace always with you. Amen.